Hi there, and welcome to my Itty Bitty Chapel. My name is Patty Chafee, and I'm the community minister at Niantic Community Church. I'm also a spiritual director and an expressive arts facilitator. The Itty Bitty Chapel is a opportunity to um, gather midweek for a short period to reflect and kind of refresh ourselves and reflect on a spiritual word or phrase. <clears throat> the uh, Itty Bitty Chapel is located in a sacred space within my home, and that is usually the place where this is recorded. Lately, I find myself um, unable to find words for all that is going on in the world around us today. The enormity of the injustice, the violence, the sickness, the loss, it's all just too much. No matter what words I come up with, nothing feels adequate or right. It seems like there's just no words. And so I turn to God. What I do know I can offer is to create a container for prayer. An invitation to this time apart, lifting up what feels right. Lifting up what feels wrong. Supporting compassionate, peaceful action. Immersing myself in God's care along with the rest of the world. In a time of overwhelming grief, for so many reasons. And I thank you for joining me in this time. So with prayer on my mind, and as if taking a poll, I asked my youngest son his thoughts about prayer after a lengthy conversation about the state of things. In his infinite, young, Ram Dass-like wisdom, he said we need to listen more. Often we sit down, make our requests known, and don't hang around long enough to receive what God has for us. Hi, God. Talk to you later. Gotta run. Bye. These were his words. <laughs> we need to look around, slow down. There are no guarantees for tomorrow, he said. So I don't know why everyone is rushing around. Be where you are. Be where you are. I talk with folks who, who uh, approach prayer with uh, lists of people to pray for. So many needs. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they have those lists. But they neglect to pray for themselves often, not wanting to bother God with our own needs and concerns. But God wants it all. God wants the whole story. He wants your story. He wants mine. That's not selfish. That's engaged. There are really only two kinds of prayer. Help me, help me, help me, and thank you, thank you, thank you, wrote um, Anne Lamott in one book. And then she followed up with another that is titled, Help, Thanks, Wow. That's her practice of prayer. Help, thanks, wow. Kind of makes sense. Asking for what we need, gratitude for what we've received, and awe at everything around us. In the spirit of brevity, the theologian, philosopher, and mystic uh, Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you said was thank you, that would be enough. If the only prayer you ever said was thank you, that would be enough. Do we ever feel like we're enough? Enough to open ourselves and our hearts to God? I wonder. On a bit of a longer note, the Lord's Prayer is important to Christians because it is what Jesus gave to his disciples as a form of prayer when they asked him to teach them how to pray. And it's found only in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. I began thinking about what the Lord's Prayer means to me. And naturally cracked open a pile of books to see what I could see. That is my typical response to further inquiry about any subject. To not trust what I know I know 
and to leave all said knowledge to professionals. I considered the Lord's Prayer, which I've been able to recite since I received my first Holy Communion at St. Francis of Assisi Church in Middletown, Connecticut, about 50 years ago. So it's been with me a while. A rote prayer, unfortunately, that I never gave much thought to, but one I would gravitate toward often when I was driving, in daily prayer, or in crisis. Not being a biblical scholar in any way, shape, or form, I wondered what one would say about its meaning. I looked it up, but nothing resonated with me. A friend asked me, what does the Lord prayer mean to me? What, what does it mean to you? She asked. I had no idea. It is a comfort, a familiarity, deep-seated tradition, and is combined with my own style of prayer, which is a conversation with my beloved Jesus. A place of opening, listening, and great vulnerability. After thinking about the question, and all biblical scholars aside, I pondered what the Lord's Prayer means and came up with this. This is, this is what it means to me. Our Father who art in heaven, our God is right here, heaven on earth. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is my God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God's kingdom is now. Let us experience all that is good and right according to God's infinite blessings and unconditional love. On earth as it is in heaven, right now, right here, in this moment and beyond. Provide for us, oh, give us this day our daily bread. Provide for us, Lord, all that we need. And forgive us our trespasses. Forgive our mistakes. We make plenty. And as we forgive those, and we, as we forgive those who trespass against us, we are called to forgive the mistakes of others. And lead us not into temptation. Please don't tempt us. Goodness knows what we'll do. But deliver us from evil. Be with us in times of darkness. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. For yours is a world filled with the light of your love, peace, hope, and healing. Amen. Let it be. In a weekly blog by the UCC.org, um, Weekly Seeds, it's called, <clears throat> Catherine Matthews writes, And so it seems to me that spending time with God in prayer in regular intimate conversation and opening ourselves to the Holy Spirit will lead us on the way of compassion and it will lead us to transformation, not just as individuals, but as a community. Because the prayer is the prayer of our community and not just a private one, it reminds us, challenges us, urges us, and inspires us as a community not only to form this prayer with our lips, but to be formed ourselves by this prayer, formed and shaped into a community of compassion and justice. The prayer calls us to join in the building of God's kingdom, not up in heaven, but here on earth, a reign of justice, healing, mercy, and love. The church is not something abstract. It is something we experience as embodied creatures with a need for community, and companionship on the journey, on the pilgrimage of faith. Even when we pray the Lord's Prayer alone in our room, there are Christians in other places praying the same prayer, forming the same prayer on their hearts and on their lips, in many different languages, and all of us being formed and transformed by it. In those moments, we are one. What does the Lord's Prayer mean for you? I'll be thinking of you during this continued quarantine time and keeping you all in prayer. I leave you with an invitation to view this 
three minute video. The link is listed below. Um, it's a, the Lord's Prayer sung by Sister Janet Mead. She is an Australian nun who was 17 when she recorded um, this toe-tapping, lift-your-spirit uh, version of the prayer in 1974. Now she's in her early 80s. <laughs> the song was an international smash, selling nearly 3 million copies and over a million in the U.S., according to Wikipedia, and also became the only song to hit the top 10 billboard in which the entire lyrical content originated from the Bible. More specifically, it is the only top 10 hit whose lyrics were attributed to Jesus Christ. Mead was nominated for a Grammy, but lost to Elvis. So please keep an out, um, check out that link and keep an eye out to join me for an upcoming prayer vigil where I promise I will not be singing the Lord's Prayer. And until next time, may God bless you in every way you need. Namaste. Thanks for being with me.